Hello, and welcome to the One Brick Workshop. I'm Nathan, and today we're going to be making some custom shelving for these filing cabinets. Now, I got these three cabinets. You can only really see this one down here. But these are custom architectural cabinets. They're very flat. They roll out. They were designed to hold maps or um, blueprints or architectural plans, stuff like that. And uh, I've use them to sort my Lego parts. Not all of them. Most of my Lego parts go into other types of bins, but these are for pieces that I need to be able to look at straight down at. Mostly minifigure pieces, uh, accessories, so on and so forth. Right now I'm still working on my sorting system, but these cabinets are great for that. Now these I got from uh, down south and uh, they took a bit of effort to get back up here. I had to rent a U-Haul. They're heavy, they're massive, they're not meant to be moved. He only had three though. Uh, these work well together. They're designed to stack on top of each other, um, but I didn't want three on top of each other. That would be too tall. I wanted a, a tabletop so I could work at as well, store some Lego on top of, store some other things. So I had two stacked on top of each other and then one stacked by itself which left a gap, uh, unfortunately. And so I need to build some sort of, well, I don't need to, I've clearly already done it, but uh, I needed to build some shelving that would be able to store more stuff and make use of this space better. Now, I didn't need space for Lego. I've got plenty of space for that. But I did need to store a lot of very flat material like this flooring, which is used for flooring, obviously, but also is used for foam cosplays. It's EVA foam, and it's super cheap when you get it as flooring, so a lot of people like to use it. Um, various other things, just some storage of some old helping hand pieces, some cinefoil, which I use when I'm trying to light stuff. Uh, what else? Got some foam core here, some old signs. This is useful for making molds, like things to hold molds in. Oh, I'm cutting my head off. Well, uh, what else? Aluminum plating for armatures. Lots of stuff in here. So I needed something that I could have very flat shelving in and I could add more shelves into if I needed and uh, was functional. So here we go and uh, let's see how I did it. First, I cleared off the space where the shelves were going to go to get some measurements. I wanted the shelves to fit precisely within the dimensions of the other cabinets. I don't nearly have enough space to cut down a 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood in my shop, so I took it out to my driveway. I supported the plywood on some scrap 2x4s so I could cut the sheet without accidentally running my circular saw into the driveway. Once I had marked out my measurements, I covered the cut line with painter's tape on both sides. This helps prevent tear out and keep the cut cleaner. As I prepped the cut, I had some concerns about being able to cut along the line precisely, even with a guide. The circular saw is not my favorite tool, and cutting four feet across plywood on the ground doesn't exactly lead to precision. I decided to cut a little beyond the size I needed, and then trim down the cut later. It's good I did this, because I definitely didn't cut the cleanest of lines. With the top and bottom cut, I remeasured and trimmed my boards down to the exact measurements I needed. Since I was only removing less than an inch of material, it was much easier to get a precise cut. Having the smaller, more manageable plywood up on sawhorses also helped. Next, I cut down all of my 2x4s into the lengths I needed. I needed the shelves to be extra sturdy, so I wanted a frame to support the top and bottom plywood. I also cut short pieces that would go upright in each corner to give the shelves their height. I cleaned up the edges of the lumber on the belt sand just to keep them a bit smoother. I wanted to make sure the frames were extra sturdy, so I opted for a half lap joint. This type of joint involves removing half the depth from two boards you want to join, so that when you overlap the two trim sections, they combine to equal the width of the original board. I didn't want to screw up any of the boards I had already cut the size, so I did some test cuts on some scrap to make sure I was removing the right amount of material. This type of cut is called a rabbit cut, and can be cut several ways on a table saw, but I opted to cut all the wood out by running the board over the blade repeatedly moving the board slightly with each pass until I had removed enough wood. It's a slow process, but it results in a clean cut. Alternately, I could have cut slots into the area I wanted to remove, and then remove the thin bits of remaining wood with a hammer before cleaning up the leftover with a chisel. This is what I did when I was making my workbench, but for this project I decided I'd rather take longer with the saw so I didn't have to use the chisel for cleanup. 
The test cuts worked great, so I was ready to move on to cutting all the rabbits on all eight of the boards that made up the two frames. It definitely took a while. Hey, while we're waiting, you should check out my website, onebrickstudios.com. You can check out all of my previous videos, read write-ups and behind the scenes of older projects, learn about which tools I use, and even catch up on me and my interests. And while you're there, consider buying me a coffee on, uh, coffee, or Kofi, however it's pronounced. It's a super simple donation website where any donations people make go directly into my PayPal. If you're enjoying what I do and feel like throwing me a few bucks, that's awesome. If not, that's totally cool too, I'm still going to make my videos. Anyway, looks like I'm nearly done here. My filing cabinets have grooves designed to help lock other cabinets into place so they don't shift about. I needed to account for these grooves on the bottom frame, so I took some measurements and cut a test slot in some scrap wood. I was just a tiny bit off, so I adjusted the fence on my table saw and got a groove that was perfect. With the grooves cut into the boards, I was ready to glue up the bottom frame. I decided to glue the frame right up on the cabinet to make sure the frame would fit with the grooves once the glue was dry. Painting the glue with a silicone brush ensures an even distribution of the glue, and I don't ruin another regular brush in the process. Once the frame was dry, I wanted to do a test fitting to make sure all my shells were going to fit perfectly with the cabinets. It's a good thing I did this, because it turns out somewhere along the way I mismeasured, and I accidentally had cut my supports too long. Too long is better than too short at least, and after some careful measurements, two more cuts, and another dry fitting in place on top of the cabinets, I finally had everything to the correct size. I made quick work of screwing the bottom plywood into the frame with my drill, driver, and some inch and a half long decking screws. That second red drill you see there is the first drill I ever bought, and it pales in comparison to my new drill, but it's still good for countersinking holes so that screw heads don't stick out of the top of the plywood. It's really nice to have two drills handy with a regular bit and a countersink bit at the same time, so I don't have to be constantly switching out bits. I didn't want to get fancy with the joinery for the vertical supports, so I just opted for some pocket holes. I used a pocket hole jig to drill pocket holes in all four of the supports, and then screwed the supports into the base with pocket hole screws. I had some issues with the support shifting as I screwed them in, so I had to occasionally unscrew partially and readjust the placement before securing again. With the supports in place, I dry fitted the top frame again and then glued it as well. I secured the top frame to the supports with more pocket screws, and then screwed the top plywood on with more deck screws. Off camera, I cut down two half inch sheets of plywood into shelves. To make the rails to hold the shelving, I cut down a scrap 2x4 on the table saw. I knew I wanted the rails to have an angle to them, but I also wanted to make sure it would be easy to screw into the frame. So first I marked where I wanted the two screw holes to be, and drilled half inch holes into each rail using a Forstner bit. I made sure to lock my drill press so I wouldn't drill all the way through. I drilled the holes before cutting the angle because I figured it'd be much harder to drill the hole through an angled surface. With all the holes drilled, I set the angle of my table saw to 45 degrees and cut down the rails, and on the belt sander I cleaned up the edges. I drilled pilot holes into all the rails and then, with much effort, screwed the rails into place, using a scrap piece of plywood as a spacer. This was a long, painful process that could have gone a lot easier if I had planned out the build better. With the help of my girlfriend Danielle, the shelves slid into place with only minor difficulty. Alright, so that's how I built this shelving. Uh, the end result? Pretty good. Um, I'm happy with how it works. It's functional. It's not very nice to look at, which I didn't need it to be. It was a little, um, not as aesthetically pleasing as I was hoping. Like, I know it's just out of plywood and two by fours. I was hoping it to be not quite as rough and tumble. Um, I think I should have planned it out a bit more. I kind of designed it as I was building it. So putting these uh, spots for the shelving hang off of, I should have probably put them on before I assembled the rest of it. These were a huge pain to attach. And despite my best efforts, you know, things just didn't quite line up. Joints are not quite flush. Uh, I think that's partially to me just rushing it. Partially the quality of the lumber is perfectly fine, but it's obviously not meant for furniture. It works fine. It will work perfectly for my needs. It is not something that will be um, grateful looking at. But in the end, it holds the stuff. It is perfectly flush with the other cabinets. It sits in this cabinet really nicely. Uh, the slots that I cut for it worked really well. I was very happy with that. So in the end, um, I consider it a success, uh, but 
Better than that, a great learning process, learning how to make new techniques, cutting wood, drilling stuff, pre-planning things, all great. So uh, till next time, catch you guys later.